Today's video is sponsored by Six Foot Tall Tumbleweed. Listen to the new album Wheel of Suffering on iTunes or on Spotify today. Dark skin, bright eyes, big booty, and thick ass thighs. Okay, the other day I made a video about a Martin guitar. Uh, I did well. Actually, the video was more about like shopping on Craigslist for different things. And uh, one of the things I was shopping for was a Martin guitar. It was supposed to be a 1955 or 56 Martin, and uh, it was a D21 supposedly. And here it is. So I have actually procured the guitar. We're going to take a look at it, and we'll see whether or not it is what it's supposed to be. But yeah, there's the case, and you can see it's a 1970s era case, and that could give us some clues as we go forward. But let's go ahead and open this uh, case up and see what we've gotten ourselves here. We'll get the we'll get the guitar up on the desk too and get a little better look at it. Get my little setup going here. Uh, what I use usually when I work on guitars, I've got uh, I've got one of these little ergonomic bead things that you use for like you know on your desk for a mouse. So I use it for the neck support, and it works very well for that. Almost like it was made for it, in fact. Um, and I use also one of my wife's uh, yoga blocks. Well, these are very light, very sturdy, very easy to move around. So they always find a use. I'll tell you what, this thing looked way different in pictures than it looks right here. You'll, we'll take a look at the problems that it has. Then they're not... They're not uh, enormous problems but we can see that this is in fact Brazilian rosewood and not mahogany as we had feared you can tell by the wear right there you can also tell by the binding that it's got a tortoise style binding probably celluloid but see the Brazilian you see the inky black stripes in it with the orange uh, fairly indicative of Brazilian rosewood and as we start to get up here onto the top, you can really start to see why I say this thing is the real deal. You see those, you see those kind of varicose vein looking uh, finish cracks running through here. Now that in and of itself is not necessarily indicative of one that's you know the real deal, but the thing is they're they're everywhere and they're in the places you would expect them to be. Uh, they kind of fan out from the back of the guitar from the very bottom here and they go in all directions and they're very old this thing has been over sprayed the bridge okay the bridge on a 1950s Martin D21 uh, should have had the saddle that went all the way to the edge you can see the saddle stops here and the saddle stops here uh, so that is indicative of this bridge having been changed the bridge has been changed there's a lot of work that's been done on this Bridge has been changed, pick guard has been changed. Originally, it would have been uh, tortoise and not black. And yes, indeed, this pick guard is a brand new pick guard, and this is just the film on top of the pick guard. So this can be just peeled right off. It was very confusing because the way the, the way this guy described it, and even when I contacted him, he said, "Oh, there's a problem with the pick guard." That's the way he described it. And I think what he was doing was he was repeating what someone had told him because he said he had this thing uh, appraised online. So he had sent some photos, probably the crappy grainy photos that I saw and you saw to someone. And they said it was the real deal, I guess, based on those photos. Or maybe he took other photos. I don't know. Uh, but at any rate, uh, they concluded uh, that it was the real deal. Interesting thing about the pick guard. This pick guard came with it in the case, and you can see it's all bent up and everything, and it, it too is black, so this is not the original pick guard either. So here is what happened with this guitar. Really interesting how silly this, this is, uh, because this dude could have really given more information in his uh, post, because when I talked to him on the phone and stuff, he seemed, you know, very credible and, and everything. It wasn't like uh, he was trying to hide anything or, any, you know, it was just, he just didn't make a very good Craigslist listing. Um, if he had described this thing better, I think he would have got, maybe gotten more bites on it. But you can see what this, this pick guard is a black one. And you can see it's been, it's been on this guitar and it was on the raw wood. See, because when they took it off, 
it did pry up a couple of small chunks. So this is something you would see on like a 70s guitar that had the problem with uh, a pit guard shrinkage. And here's what I think has happened to this guitar. He said Martin did all of the work on this guitar. He said, yes, it was worked on and Martin did all the work and he didn't even know what all work they had done. I had to point out all the things that had been done, like the bridge, for instance. I told him, you know, here are the things that, um, you know, are not right with this guitar in terms of it being original. It's, these are the non-original things. And I pointed out the bridge, pointed out the sat that the, you know, because the saddle doesn't go all the way to the edge. I pointed out, you know, obviously the pit guard is not correct. This pit guard right here isn't even correct. This was put on by Martin in the 1970s, and what happened is probably at some later date, this pit guard began to shrink like all those 70s Martin pit guards do. And what they did was they put this on here, and then they sprayed over the top. So they, I think Martin, or maybe even someone else, but probably Martin, uh, did this overspray, but they sprayed over the pit guard like they were doing in the 70s. So they had this on here and it cracked just like most of these end up doing. So this this pit guard had been put on in the 70s uh, by Martin and I think that is when they did all of the work on this guitar was probably in the 1970s. Uh, they may have done some work on it a little bit later as well when they took this pit guard off again because uh, this pit guard obviously had begun to shrink and uh, and it created a small pit guard crack right there as you can see you see that pit guard crack uh, that those are extremely common among 70s martins you get those all the time and they crack right there in that same spot uh, they also sometimes will crack uh, over in here as they shrink and pull away the thing is you know those pit guards were put underneath uh, the finish and you can see how much smaller this pit guard is than the other pit guard uh, because it doesn't extend all the way to the edge and it probably would have originally been about that size. So what has happened is over the years it shrunk and it pulled the wood with it and made that crack. And that's very common for 70s Martins, not common for 50s Martins. So something happened to the original pit guard. Uh, it probably shrunk and cracked as well because it was celluloid. So it probably uh, just basically disintegrated. And that's also pretty common. Uh, here are the other things about this. And again, I said, um, you know, this binding is correct for the period. Uh, it is also kind of a tortoise uh, celluloid, and you can see it here. Uh, you can also see the back binding is also the same uh, celluloid uh, tortoise. Uh, the fretboard. Uh, fretboard looks really clean, too clean really to be original, obviously. I thought this is what I thought at first, but then the more I got to looking at this, the more I concluded. Uh, this fretboard has been uh, sanded down and refretted. The frets have been changed. And they did a pretty good job. And the fretboard itself, once again, was sanded down. Now, the reason I say that is because uh, if you look right here on the cowboy cords, you can see the old remnants of some, um, of some wear. You can see right here where... Uh, even though they sanded this, it didn't get quite all of the wear. And it's probably going to be hard to kind of see that on this video. Uh, but right there you can see how, how it kind of kind of goes down into the wood grain just a bit further on these cowboy cords. Back in here as well. Right here you can see the wear. So there were probably some, you know... Uh, indentations into the board down here in this area on the cowboy cords and while they were refretting this they decided to go ahead and, ju and just level the board out and take out most of the you know the dimples that had been put in down here from playwear you know personally I wish they hadn't have done that I wish they just left the board uh, but I do believe this is still the original uh, fretboard and the reason I believe it's still the original one is because <clears throat> if I inspect the side here in spite of the fact that I know that this has been uh, uh, oversprayed, uh, I do not think, I don't think this board has been off of here. Now, it's possible that it could have been, but it looks to me like it's still the original board. Uh, the headstock. Headstock. 
dead giveaway for 50s Martin. You, it's very consistent with the kind of wear you would see on a 1950s instrument in general, but um, also a 50s Martin. This is a Brazilian rosewood uh, overlay for sure. You can see even with the massive amount of dust, you can see how uh, uh, deep and inky that grain is. It has the original style uh, CF Martin. It's the correct style uh, logo. Established 1833 logo has the correct uh, Clouson style tuners uh, with the uh, metal buttons. Uh, the nut has been changed for sure, so that work was done. Uh, probably once again, this guy said it, all the work was done by Martin, um, and he didn't really know a whole lot about this guitar. That much was obvious. This guitar, though, belonged to his grandmother, who he said was a uh, lived in eastern Kentucky. So she lived over in the uh, Appalachian region of Kentucky. And uh, she owned this, and she ran a, a radio station. She was also a, a pastor. So she was a preacher as well, which is, which is interesting because um, that's not something you saw a lot of. You didn't see a whole lot of women uh, preachers, but apparently she was one. But yeah, you know, everything about this just screams uh, 1950s Martin. If we look right here, D21149321. Uh, but you can see the back side of the Brazilian. And some people were asking about, oh, where is the, uh, where's the sticker logo? Well, they didn't have sticker logos on Martin guitars this far back. Uh, those are relatively new thing. They didn't put stickers. Uh, what they did was they, uh, they put their logo into this, into the, uh, uh, the little center support there on the back But you can see that uh, that there have been some crack repairs. You can see one right there, and you can see uh, uh, You can see some glue wipe up If we look further down in here inside the guitar you can see there's one cleat right there So there's been a repair. There's a uh, it looks like maybe a Yeah, there's some back crack repairs on a little further down it's gonna be hard to see inside the guitar right now without some good light. Let's get the strings off this thing. We can see the strings are high anyway. The action is high, as some people pointed out, but I don't think it's gonna need a neck reset entirely. It's possible it's gonna, uh, it's kind of on the borderline, but I think there's also a lot of meat on that saddle right there. You can see how much meat is on that saddle. And I think by the time we get that meat taken off that saddle, it will be about right where we need it to be. But what I want to do right now is get these strings off so I can show you the inside uh, of the guitar and the repairs that were done. Okay, so for, we'll first start up here by the neck block. And you can see there's no evidence of the neck block ever having been replaced. There is a, a crack repair there. Uh, you can see some of, the, uh, some of the wipe down from the adhesive. Uh, here you can uh, see another crack repair on the back. And you can see a couple of cleats. That were added there, and they look like they're rosewood cleats. Uh, nicely made cleats. Those are definitely professionally done. Uh, you can also see some where the, some of the braces were uh, were readhered. Uh, this is uh, all the way to the end block, and you can see some. It looks like there was some drippage of some some glue down there. You can see it all the way to, and you can also see another crack back there near the back. You can see another cleat. Uh, now we're looking at the top, and you can see that's the uh, center book match, and you can see where it was re-glued at one point, and we have some wipe up there. Uh, you can also see the maple bridge plate. Uh, you can see some of the sides were uh, look like they were re-adhered as well. A little better shot of that. You can see uh, you can see all the way to the edges there. Maybe some some more ad adhesion. Uh, you can see right there is another cleat. That's where the repair was done on the uh, crack for the pit guard. Also, one th another thing we could tell from this is that the maple bridge plate has been replaced entirely. And the way I know that is because there's no if, there's no chew marks at all from where uh, you know the ball ends of strings have been really chewing around on one of these since the 1950s. I would say that that has definitely been replaced. The bridge probably had been cracked 
when the maple bridge plate wears out and cracks, uh, sometimes the ball ends can be pulled up into the bottom of the bridge itself. And what can happen at that point is the bridge can sort of crack in half and then you have to replace the bridge. I would say that's why the bridge was probably replaced and that's why also uh, the maple bridge plate was also replaced. Okay, here's this thing with the strings off and we're going to be able to see just a little bit better uh, some of the things I'm talking about. Uh, you can see here where the where the crack was right next to that pick guard. And this pick guard I may uh, go ahead and replace with a tortoise style pick guard because you can get tortoise and I may may do that. I'm going to think about it. I may also uh, go ahead and route uh, this bridge all the way out to the edges uh, like the original was supposed to be so it look, just looks more original and you can also see a little bit better what I was talking about on the uh, on the fretboard you can see some of the little areas just like you see right there see how there's kind of a little looks like a little bit of scarring right in here that's where um, they sanded down right to the bottom of where you know it was kind of dug out and you can see a little bit of it there you can see a little bit of it uh, right in here as well, like on the G chord. But this is definitely the original uh, fretboard. Uh, one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to add a little bit of stain to that little scar there and also to this little circular uh, string scar. So we'll just kind of stain that so it kind of blends in a little better. We'll clean it. As well, I'll probably also go ahead and oil this fretboard and make sure everything is uh, just retaining moisture well, especially through the winter time. It won't hurt to do that. You can see here um, where she played quite a lot, strumming up here, um, just high on the neck, probably strumming right in here some. And there's some there's some scars to prove it right there. Some wear there as well. Uh, over here, you can see some. Uh, there was some damage and a little crack kind of running up here, and that was repaired. All of the uh, finish checking under the overspray, and again, you know, it looks like what they did was they lightly sanded. Um, they just lightly sanded the original finish and then did some overspray, and what they did there was they were trying to uh, just seal everything together because they had done several crack repairs uh, on the top as well as on the back and some of these cloudy areas some of this is dust uh, but some of it also is where uh, moisture kind of maybe got trapped a little bit under the some of the areas of overspray perhaps and was just never properly corrected but what we're going to do is um, uh, go ahead and polish this and that should get most of that out with no issues but yeah this is this is a great freaking guitar for what I paid for it um, I actually got it for a lot uh, a lot less than he was even asking at the end of the day because of all the of all the cracks and everything that he didn't even know about uh, but we can see here on the uh, the little bit of parquetry here it has what you would expect to see for a guitar of this age you can see also the ink the inky kind of uh, back and this is definitely Brazilian also get a look at the neck here uh, soft v-shaped neck and we have a lot of wear I mean this thing was played like the Dickens man a lot of play wear she probably used a capo a lot and just played the heck out of this thing apparently uh, you know, like I said, she was on the radio. She was, she was a local radio star, and she was also uh, she was also a preacher, which is unusual for a woman. Uh, this one is slightly cockeyed, and I think I'm going to try to straighten that up. It also has um, some different screws. Uh, it's the exact type. It's the correct style of uh, Cluson tuner, and I would say that's probably still the original tuner. But you can see where it's kind of cockeyed, even from where it used to sit, probably. And the screws aren't uh, aren't the same as these others. I'm not sure which screws are the correct ones, the, uh, the Phillips or the flat. I would have guessed the flat, but it could have also been the Phillips. Not 100% sure on the 50s for Martin. 
Uh, as for who did the repairs, he did say Martin ha did the repairs, and I have no reason to doubt the guy. He was only repeating stuff that he had been told by his grandmother anyway. So she would have known. And she would have also been the original owner and would have gotten free repair work uh, long about the time this thing probably needed it in the 70s. If she played this thing a lot, like it obvious, she obviously did, uh, you know, this thing probably did need some uh, repairs by the 1970s. And that would also explain the 1970s era case. Uh, it would explain the 1970s era pick guard that has uh, sh shrunk since. This thing might have actually been back to Martin twice. Uh, and that's kind of my guess right now. I think it probably went to Martin at least once uh, and had that put on. And they oversprayed. Uh, and also, she probably also bought a brand new case because they were... They had better cases at the time, and they probably upsold her to a case. Um, fixed all these uh, cracks. We have a longer one running right through here that's cleated and, and uh, properly uh, repaired. We have a longer one here that's running uh, that was re-glued and cleated. Got another small one down here. Then uh, that one also, I think, has a cleat on it, and as does this one right there but uh, yeah definitely this is the real deal Holyfield without a doubt but yeah I mean you know you can see lots of just you know very honest wear on this thing um, and it looks like uh, it looks like the finish seal you know was broken on this uh, on the neck so it may have had a neck reset at some point you can see there how the because typically that, that finish would have just melded right in seamlessly and it looks like it's um, it's been it's had some breakage on that finish and that leads me to believe that possibly this thing has had a neck reset sometime in its past maybe at the time all this other work was done but yeah, man, Brazilian Rosewood Martin from the 1950s. I'm not going to tell you exactly what I paid for this because you probably uh, you probably wouldn't believe me even if I told you. It's hard to know what you're looking at whenever a seller doesn't give you a whole lot of information to go by and doesn't provide you with a lot of good photographs. But uh, this is one of those instances where um, you know at least agreeing to meet with the guy was absolutely the right thing to do, and I ended up with a treasure as a result. Well, this is one toolbox you guys never get to see. I kind of keep it under my desk, and it's got all my luthier tools in it. And uh, the first thing I'm going to need is is one of the, uh, a stain pen. I keep stain pens in here of different colors. Fret sticks, just everything, everything I need for uh, guitar work. That's a nice bridge call. What you do with that is you clamp uh, one side... Uh, on the top of the bridge and one side underneath and uh, it will allow you to subtly change bellying on a guitar and you use two different pieces for that got a uh, let's see I think that's what I need right there yeah yeah that's for nut and saddle slotting and I think it'll be one of those just all kinds of tools here I need to find a find one of them this is the one I think I want to use. This is these uh, little Minwax uh, wood finish stain markers come in real handy. These are just little touch up pins, and they come in real real handy when you're doing just just minor touch up um, on stuff. And we're trying to you know blend in um, slight finish uh, you know anomalies on something. It just basically gets the stain down in there, and it'll blend things together, um, so you don't notice it quite as much. I keep one in the American, and I keep one in uh, red mahogany. I haven't used a lot of this stuff in a, in a good while. I haven't been able to do any guitars, man. I used to uh, do, use this shit all the time. Like, before I started doing videos, especially, um, I did a lot of work on guitars. A lot. And I... I I wasn't filming a lot of it either. That's the thing. I, I didn't think it was something anybody would really want to see because there's so much of it kind of already out there on the web. You know, you've got channels um, 
you got channels like Stuart McDonald that do like phenomenal job at showing off all this stuff and I just didn't think anybody would really want to see it. And plus you've got other channels too like uh, you know Dave's World of Fun Stuff and uh, Will's Easy Guitar and just you know several other channels too that do like uh, you know kind of guitar luthery and stuff and repairs and all of that so it wasn't really something I felt like uh, merited you know filming so I just didn't show a lot of that stuff I did get photographs of a lot of old repairs and stuff and what I might do is um, at some point maybe on channel 2 take some of those old photographs and put them into like a um, like a photo collage or something and uh, you know so we can go through together and see what uh, some of those past repairs that I've done and maybe I'll do some voiceover and make them tell a story and that'll be kind of cool but right now what I want to do is I want to I'm gonna mount up this camera first and I want to get one of these uh, slotting tools and uh, see if I can bring this all the way out to the end and we're also going to replace this uh, saddle uh, with a bone saddle and we'll use a uh, blank for that I've got a couple of different slotting sizes I've got a 1 8 inch and a 3 30 seconds and I'm not sure which one is going to be appropriate here so we're just going to measure that one is too small you see there's just a lot of play in that this one might be too big this is a 1 8 yeah that one's too big so I don't yeah I don't want to try to do this um, yeah I'm, I'm a, I think I'm gonna leave this bridge because what I'm doing right now is really just cosmetic anyway it's just trying to uh, make the guitar you know appear as it would have appeared in 1956 when it was new so it's kind of a yeah it's just kind of a vanity thing to try to to try to bring that out to the edge and I don't have the appropriate size um, but since it's smaller and this other one is too big um, I'd rather just stick with what's here and it's you know like I said it's not like I'm trying to hide the fact that the bridge was replaced anyway that's not the goal the goal is just to make it look right you know so this thing ha again has uh, all of the hallmarks of an original 1956 it, it just everything about it is screaming legit and I have no reason to believe that this thing is anything but legit we can also check that serial number okay the this is the last number of the year so uh, uh, let's see 140 what I say 149 so the last number of 1955 was 147 so this will be an early uh, 1956 the last number of 1956 is 153 so this is correct for 1956 that's exactly what we have here is a 1956 Martin D21 Okay, let's turn our attention to these couple little scars on the headstock. Like I said, I'm going to try to um, just put a, add a little bit of stain here to a couple of these areas on the headstock. It's not, you know, it's just kind of, again, it's kind of a vanity thing. It's not uh, not critical. Uh, but this is the uh, early American, and I find that this particular color blends really well with a lot of different uh, a lot of different guitar woods. Any of the darker guitar woods, like. Um, uh, rosewood usually this works pretty well on but we'll try to make this little circle disappear for one and it is in the uh, finish not so much the wood but um, hopefully this some of this will get down in there and stain it a little bit just just to kind of just to kind of mask it a little make it look a little better and we'll uh, wipe this off too yeah it's not gonna do it's not gonna really do much for the uh, for the you know the little finish circle there but might be a little better than it was you do have to be careful with that stuff in some finishes sometimes it will get kind of it'll just seep up under the finish and uh, sort of stain the wood in a way you didn't anticipate <laughs> so but with really dark woods like this, it's not going to hurt anything. Another area I'm going to touch up with this pin is right here along the boundary of the neck. So we're just going to we're just going to come in here with it and get right along that boundary, and that's just going to mark out that. Uh, it looked like we had what what was what looked like some finished dust in there. So 
that would just kind of stain that and sort of make that disappear a bit so it's not quite so evident and then right along there you can see it kind of there was some finished dust uh, I'm not sure it's where they tried to maybe it's where they tried to polish it or something at some point but whatever but that'll just kind of help that disappear see like watch this right here see how that's kind of white right there on that boundary see that it just makes it disappear and then you can come back and wipe it and it's uh you know just any any little bits of um dust or debris or whatever that was down in there it just basically stains those also and uh just just kind of cleans it up makes all that stuff blend in a little better makes it disappear just little tricks of the trade man just to make things uh just make things look nicer so it looks like somebody cared about it you know see how much better that is than it was okay um, I like to treat fretboards with lemon oil. I know there are some people who turn their noses up at lemon oil. I know there are some people who have kind of made a you know YouTube career out of dissing lemon oil and such substances on fretboards. I'm not going to name their names, uh, but I love lemon oil. Uh, what it does but basically is it ensures that the moisture that is now in this fretboard is going to have a very hard time escaping this fretboard particularly in the winter months that are fast approaching whenever the heat's and the house is kicking on a lot and uh, it's going to want to sap all of the moisture out of um, uh, out of all of the guitars that are around so uh, in order to protect those and to keep that from happening um, you want to try to oil your fretboards if you, especially if you don't play them a lot. Now, if you play them a lot, maybe that won't be necessary um, because the oil, you know the oils naturally in your hands will help do that. Um, but if you don't play them a lot, or if or if they were like this one, where they had obviously you know the fretboard had been at some point sanded uh, flat, and um, you know nobody had really played it much after that apparently. Uh, this is just going to help protect the fretboard and what I do is just put the lemon oil on and just leave it. It will soak all of this in. Now I know there are people who are going to come along and say, well the, ins the whole inside of the guitar is, is exposed wood, yada yada yada. And you're absolutely right. That's true. The entire inside of the guitar is exposed wood and it will tend to leach out uh, all of the absorbed moisture uh, if the air around it gets really dry. So that you're right, that will happen. But at least this part won't do that, and at least this part won't do that. So the parts that I can reach, I'm going to go ahead and lemon oil. And also, the other reason not to really lemon oil, obviously, these other parts is because these are the parts that create your tone and vi have to vibrate. You don't want to fill that with a lot of oil, basically. That wouldn't make any sense to do that. You'd also be surprised at what lemon oil can do to um, uh, rusted or corroded parts on electric guitars even, too. Like if you have an electric guitar out on the bench and you're lemon oiling up the rosewood uh, neck fretboard anyway, uh, go ahead and try putting some lemon oil on your um, corroded hardware parts and just leave it on and see uh, for a few minutes and then wipe it off and see what it does. You'll take a bunch of the uh, rust and stuff with you. Now you can really see the, the little dimples I was talking about. Yeah, see? See like right there? See that, just that whole area, how it's kind of dimpled in this area too? And see that one right there, like for the, like the A minor chord? Or I guess that would be the E, would that be the, yeah, second string, whatever. Do you get the idea? See these areas, uh, then that's probably why they went ahead and, pl you know, sanded or planed this board. Um was to get that you know to get kind of down where they didn't have such deep grooves in this in the cowboy chord areas 
Now, my preference would have been just to leave that because it's part of the character of the guitar, but you know, if this thing went to Martin, you know, they're not, they probably, in the 70s especially, they weren't that concerned about the character of a, of a 50s guitar because it really, you know, nobody cared at that point. It was just yet, it was just another day, another, you know, another bit of warranty work for them. So they, it wasn't a, you know, they weren't trying to preserve the character of the guitar or anything like that. They were just trying to uh, do right by the customer and make everything right. I am going to, uh, tomorrow, I'm gonna I'm gonna contact Martin. I, I don't know if they're in on Saturday or not. I might have to wait till Monday, actually. But I'm gonna try to contact Martin and see um, see what uh, what records they have for this guitar, uh, if any, and that should uh, help us in identifying what you know what we have and what work uh, they they know about that has been done. But see how much better that board looks, how much you know darker and healthier that board looks right there than it did before. And you could actually smell the fresh rosewood like it had just been, uh, it was almost like it had been done yesterday. Now it could have been done 30, 40 years ago and it still would have smelled like it had been done yesterday. Yeah, see that bridge is looking better too. It's just overall looking looking better already. We'll polish up the body as well, and that's going to take out probably a lot of this cloudiness, and we'll we'll take a look at it after that. All right, now watch this on the back, especially. Uh, you can see all the just the cloudiness, just the it's just white, and you really you know, right in here too. There's a bunch of cloudiness. That's not only reflections either. You know, you can see all the just the white cloudiness in the finish. We'll check this out. First of all, I think I want to stain along this crack just a little bit because it, uh, the finish around it, it did go ahead and separate right there. So I want to just get a little bit of something in there to make it less apparent. Uh, I'm going to also use lemon oil. You're going to think I'm crazy. Uh, but but a lot of what this is is it's it's um, it's just kind of grime as well. But check this out. Now then, look at that. That's a lot different, eh? It's the other beauty of any the beauty of anything that's uh, nitrocellulose cellulose uh, finished as well is that you can always I could always come back in here if I wanted to and overspray that I mean I'm not going to but if I wanted to come back in here and you can see the cracks uh, where they were repaired and you know and these will these will kind of these will kind of contract and swell with the seasons and. Uh, you know that's why you you'll get uh, cracks in the finish along that line as well, even with the overspray. Um, but now the overspray is not apparent. And you remember earlier when there was just a bunch of white dust and everything down in that crack, and I've gotten rid of all that. Also along the binding, there's one area of binding right here that's uh, loose, and it's right there at the waist. And that happens a lot. You get that a lot because this. This binding shrinks, so you can see where it's come, kind of come loose there. That can be re-glued though, no problem. I need to clean the back of the headstock as well, and I think while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and remove these tuners um, and just clean the back of the headstock with the tuners removed. It's just a lot easier to, to do with no tuners on here. Yeah, you can definitely see that these were the original tuners. The footprints are exact. And we're going to get a, especially a look at this one and see uh, what's going on with it. I think it might have been um, removed maybe at one point and put back on, and it was put back on at a slightly wrong angle. Okay, and we'll also get a chance to check out this tuner versus the other ones. Um, and you can see right here, uh, this is the t this is the tuner that was questionable, and it's a patent number tuner. And this one also is a patent number tuner. So these are 
these are the same tuner and yes indeed he do that one is that one is definitely you could see where it was kind of put back on and somebody when they put it on they put it on a little bit squonky you can see two distinct different footprints here you can see one that's over on kind of this way and then you have the second one that's over here a little bit i think they did actually they filled the old screw hole so we'll put it back in the old screw hole it doesn't make any sense to fill it and then not use it so that's stupid and again with the lemon oil, um, I like this stuff so much because, look, watch what's going to happen to this. So yeah, this is just with lemon oil um, right now. And the good thing about lemon oil is it's, uh, you know, it's all natural. It's not toxic. It's not going to harm you. And, you know, this is a concern if you uh, do this sort of thing day in and day out. If you, if you mess with a lot of guitars and you're constantly... If you're a dealer, or you're flipping guitars, or you're a collector, or wh whatever it is, um, if you deal with a lot of guitars and you clean a lot of them, the more you can try to stay away from stuff that's potentially toxic, the better off you're going to be in the long run. And that's where lemon oil comes in handy in just a lot of different applications. I've just found a lot of uses for it. Just getting, just generally taking off grime. Alright, I've gotten about as far as I can get with the lemon oil, so we're going to go, we're going to move to this. Uh, this is 3M Super Duty Rubbing Compound, and the part number is uh, 5954. This stuff is the business. This is the best stuff for guitars, hands down, that I've ever found. It works on uh, nitrocellulose lacquer, it works on poly finishes. Um, it is mildly abrasive, but it's abrasive uh, at the uh, sub 2000 grit. So like, you know, after you go 1000 grit sandpaper, 2000 or 1500, 2000 grit sandpaper, then you come back with this stuff and it really polishes it out and takes all of the, uh, all of your sanding marks out if you're doing finishes. The other thing about this stuff too, is if you have a really light overspray, uh, on a vintage guitar that you kind of just want to get rid of uh, this will also get rid of that overspray it will actually kind of uh, well it'll, it'll what it'll do is like I said it'll kind of uh, melt it into the old finish okay so there's the back of the headstock all polished up and uh, everything's done there so I may also go ahead and uh, lubricate these tuners. All right, now I'm going to come back with some of this uh, liquid wrench white lithium grease and just spray a little bit of it down inside of these holes, and that's going to lubricate. Uh, it's going to lubricate these for a good long while, hopefully. We are about to call Martin to see what kind of information we can glean about this D21. Thank you for contacting Martin Guitars Customer Service Department. Please choose one of the following options. If you are a consumer and have general questions regarding CF Martin instruments or how warranty coverage works, please press 1. Martin Guitar, Jason speaking. Yeah, hello Jason. My name is Brad and uh, I'm the proud new owner of uh, what I believe to be a 1956 Martin D21. And uh, okay. I, I've got a serial number on it. I'm just curious. The guy I got it from said that his grandmother owned it and she had some work done on it through you guys. And I'm just curious if you have any records of that. Hi, uh, Mike. What's the serial number on the guitar? Uh, 149321. Okay. And you know uh, her name? I do not yet. Uh, he's he's going to text me a bunch more information, uh, but I don't know her name yet. Okay. Now, uh, our repair records from back at this point don't give a detail as to what was done. Uh, let's see here, but it looks like it was here. And let's see, this is... In 1968. Oh, it was there in 68. I, th I would have guessed in the 70s. Okay. No. Uh, let's see here. Okay. And it was also here again in 71. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. 
Now, was the same owner still owning it then, the original owner? Uh, I mean, I, it didn't even, it didn't come in under the owner. Actually, no, yeah, it did, right here, okay. Okay. The first instance, it came in under a dealer, and then the second instance, it did come in uh, under the owner. Right, right. Is there yeah. is there a possible way you can email me those records? Are those digitized, or...? Yeah, unfortunately, I can't release that. I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If I were to call back and have her name at that point, would I be able to access them then? No, because it's not uh, a specific record to one person. It's just a listing of instruments that came in that day. I see. Okay. So there's multiple people and multiple instrument names on there, so it's something we don't release. I see. Okay. Um let me think if there was any other thing I wanted to ask you. Um, now that is, you do list it as a D21. It hasn't been rebacked or anything. Okay. Um, um, and it doesn't say anything about the repair work that was done, cracks or anything like that? No, because we don't have the details from that long ago, uh, unfortunately. Do you have a sales record for a new case during 1971? For the? No, we don't have any of that either. Okay. Okay. Well, um, I think that's... Uh, that's all I needed to know. Was there anything else I might want to know, like just out of curiosity, that you would have there? Ah, uh, no. It looks like all the information we have available. Okay. Well, excellent. I'm uh, I'm loving the guitar, so I'll probably end up uh, buying more from you in the future. Uh, sounds good. Thanks a lot, sir. Jason, right? Sure. Have a good day. Thank you, yes. Jason. Bye bye. Okay, so this video is running on a bit long, and I thought we might as well go ahead and skip to uh, all the things that were done to round out this restoration. You can see here the bridge. I filed down the saddle, of course, and lowered the action. I also ramped behind the saddle, and this is kind of important if you have to lower the uh, action a lot. Uh, which I kind of did here. Um, this thing is sort of on the verge of needing a neck reset. It really it doesn't technically, um, but it was sort of on the verge of needing one. What I did to compensate for the string break over the saddle is to uh, is to put some ramp slots in there, and that uh, that has gotten the break where uh, where it needs to be, and the action is now where it needs to be as well. I was especially happy how nice the finish and everything came out after I had polished the whole thing. It just came out really nice. Uh, gone were all of the uh, problem areas with the uh, milkiness. Uh, there was none of that anymore. And it was just a real, real nice, shiny, pretty guitar after that. Here's the back of the headstock. You can see where that one uh, cockeyed tuner has been straightened up. And of course, the tuners were all greased as well. Here's the front of the headstock. It cleaned up really nicely, but uh, as you can see, the, uh, the, the stain pen didn't really do a whole lot. And finally, I went ahead and filed out the nut slots and got those all consistent. Uh, there were a couple of the strings that were higher and lower off the fretboard uh, than others, and I got all of those uh, consistent all the way across. And if you look closely there, you can also see some graphite where I... Uh, I marked all of the slots with pencil so that the strings will slide more easily back and forth uh, through the slots. So yeah, that's it. Uh, let's uh, give this thing a listen.
All right, so that is a 1956 Martin D21. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit subscribe down below. Also hit the bell to receive all notifications. And for now, see y'all later.